Hello everyone, welcome back. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do for today's video, but then I opened social media and it became very apparent topic that I needed to talk about because every major account that I know is posting about it. Uh, it's an Olympic event. Angela Carini, an Olympic boxer, was defeated today within the first 45 seconds of her match against Amin Khalif. This was not a lucky shot by where the opponent the reason this is notable is that this was a brutal beatdown by a male in the ring with a female. Here's a bit of that fight. Solid straight right hand from Khalif there. In red from Algeria. Taking the win. That's hard to watch. Um, you, as you can see, she was sobbing as she left the ring. And later in her post game interview, which went something like this. Non so se si sente. I want to show you Lui something. <laughs> Ho fatto l'ultimo chilometro perché un giorno mi senti stanca. Prima di Tokyo mi sentivo stanca. Il Sibabbo sono stanca, gli allenamenti sono intensi, però io non mollo. Lui mi disse Angelino Babbo, un campione è un po' come quando combatti è un po' come il ciclismo. Il campione quando vede l'ultimo chilometro lo sai che cosa fa? Pedala ancora di più. Allora tu arrivo a quell'ultimo chilometro e pedala, vai fino in fondo perché io sarò sempre con te e così ho fatto fino alla fine, ho combattuto con sangue negli occhi perché volevo a tutti i costi questa vittoria, solo per il mio So this woman, this young woman, has trained her whole life to be an Olympic athlete, to get to this point. By her own account, she's pushed through all these challenges to be here at the Games, to make her father proud. And that was all brought to nothing and ripped away from her by a man who was allowed to get in the ring and beat her up. And put aside for a moment the emotional devastation of losing what you've worked so hard for and the global tele televised defeat and the embarrassment that brings, let's put that aside. This could very well have endangered her life. Quoting now from an article from The Independent. Khalif's win over Karini sparked controversy as the latter withdrew after the Algerian landed the first clean punch of the fight. Karini immediately turned to her team and opted against continuing, and the Italian soon collapsed to her knees in tears. Karini, 25, could be heard telling her coach, it's not right, it's not right. She later told reporters that she had never been hit so hard in her career, end quote. So this independent article is the main source I've read concerning this topic, but I'll assume they are a good sampling of how everyone else is covering this. They use the preferred pronouns of Amin Khalif and refer to the whole thing as quote unquote controversial, and it is not. We all know what this is, clear and simple, a man far outmatching the woman that he's fighting and not feeling any shame about it whatsoever. The independent article gives us a bit more information about Khalif and his background. Uh, reading now that same article. Last year, Khalif was disqualified from the Women's World Championships in New Delhi for failing a gender eligibility test at the same tournament. Taiwan's Lin Yuting was also disqualified. The IBA did not specify why the boxers failed their gender eligibility tests, but did clarify that neither underwent testosterone examinations. Another article that I've checked said that uh, Khalif did test positive for XY chromosomes in a DNA test. His scheduled next to fight on Saturday, August 3rd. Her opponent is not yet known, but a victory would guarantee the Algerian a bronze medal at 66 kg, so that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 130 pounds. And the chance to compete for silver or gold. Now talking about um, Irini. Speaking after her fight, said, for me, it's not a defeat. For me, when you climb those ropes, you're already a warrior. You're already a winner. Regardless of everything, it's okay. Fine like this. I didn't lose tonight. I only did my job as a fighter. I got in the ring and I fought. I didn't make it. I'm coming out with my head held high and with a broken heart. 
I got in the ring and I said I'm going to give it all I've got, regardless of the person in front of me who doesn't interest me at this moment. I had to give it my best. So with regard to all the controversies, I was never interested. I went in and I just wanted to win. Speaking to the BBC, she added, it could have been the match of a lifetime, but I had to preserve my life as well in that moment. Uh, a lot of respect to her for handling this the way that she's handling it, uh, because obviously there has to be a lot of anger and outrage, but uh, she is just committed to her sport. She was just there. She she got in and fought because she wanted to win for her father, which respect to that. But I hope every competitor after this will boycott fighting Elif in any way at all. Uh, trying to find in the article now. Ah, uh, there it is. Uh, neither Khalif 25 nor two-time world champion Lin 28 identifies as transgender or intersex, so he, he's not even claiming to be transgender or trapped in the wrong body. It's just a straight-up man. And not that it would make anything better if he did identify as transgender, but he doesn't. He, he's just a dude that wanted to compete with women. And the International Olympic Committee, IOC, let it happen. In the past, some might have been able to say that the transport issue was just a fringe thing. But today it went to the global stage. The eyes of every country in the world are on these events. It's not just America and it's not just a few places in Europe. That would be bad enough. An international committee stood by and organized this and approved this. Several years ago, I heard a quote that there are many societies in the world, but only one civilization. So a sick society is a large enough problem to worry about. We've seen that here in Canada, in the United States, etc. But when so many of these societies contract the same mind virus at the same time, and they collaborate together to allow such an evil thing to happen. We have a civilizational crisis on our hands. What happened today goes against all the principles of honor, of logic, of reason, and of sanity itself. And we can't let it go unchallenged. I know for a fact there are billions of people who are outraged or would be outraged if they knew that this was allowed to happen. We are not rich or powerful. We're not the heads of the Olympics. We're not heads of nations. And unfortunately, we don't get to personally prevent this from happening but we have been granted a voice and we need to use it we need to speak up together and make this as uh, controversial if you're the independent make this as controversial as we can make a big deal of, out of this let them know this is not okay and we noticed this we know what happened here this is a man that was allowed to fight a woman and this is something that would never happen in a sane and healthy civilization so you might not be able to do a lot, but use your voice, shine a light on this evil, call it out for what it is, and by all means, if you haven't already, boycott the Olympics. Until next time, stay safe, keep an eye on the world, use your voice, God bless.